In today's video, we're going to be looking at the history of Gromit Unleashed, an ominous title without context that in fact refers to a number of large Gromit sculptures being placed across the UK as a sort of fundraising easter egg hunt. If you haven't heard about this one, it's pretty cool, so I hope you enjoy. The purpose of Gromit Unleashed was to fundraise for Wallace and Gromit's Grand Appeal, a charity founded in 1995 that has since helped to raise funds for medical equipment at the Bristol Royal Hospital for Children and St Michael's Hospital. These are obviously very serious and also depressing issues, so I love Ardman's approach of utilising bright and colourful figurines of this beloved character to spread some joy and simultaneously help those in need. Gromit Unleashed 1 took place in Bristol in 2013, with 80 5 foot tall fibreglass Gromit statues being distributed to various artists and celebrities across the world. These individuals were handpicked by none other than Nick Park, who tasked them with decorating the grommets as they pleased, resulting in a vast array of wacky designs intended to draw the public's attention and ultimately become profitable for the charity as genuine art pieces. It's incredible. See, I'm used to seeing grommet this big, so <laughs> you know, it's quite overwhelming. What is it about that creature which is so lovable? Is it the length of the legs? Is it the floppy oh. ears? What is it? Oh, it, it's very hard. It's very hard for me to, to say, really. Uh, but I've been astounded. You know, just by the amount of love that people have for Gromit has been expressed in so many ways. I think it's to do with his eyebrows. It is very human expression. Some of the statues were even painted in a public shopping centre before all 80 were transported to a secure warehouse in Bristol to be treated with a weatherproof liqueur and attached to concrete bases before being, well, unleashed. There's far too many to mention, but notable examples of grommets include the extravagant Gromit Lightyear, which was sent to John Lasseter and the team at Pixar before being returned to the UK. Hi, this is John Lasseter of Pixar Animation Studios, and this is our grommet. I think Nick actually asked John if he would do a grommet, and John said, of course I would. And so that began this journey of this dog that was shipped over here uh, through the Panama Canal and up the west coast to us. Yeah, the biggest challenge we had was actually putting the, the sphere on, on Gromit's head. And the other stuff we changed on him was adding the backpack and actually adding his, you know, Buzz's chest plate where his buttons are. The other fun thing is Nephilim thought of the idea of putting Andy on the bottom of the foot, so that's hidden underneath one of the feet. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, and then John signed it, which is cool as well. Whilst this bald one made by Harry Hill is straight to the point, and I love his interview regarding it. It is the, uh, <laughs> it's the bald grommet. <laughs> A bald, sh shaved grommet. Yeah. Harry, what yes. a wonderful pink grommet. Thank where, you very where much. Where did the inspiration come from? <laughs> <laughs> the grommet turned up and I just shaved the, uh, the existing fur off. No, I'm, uh, as I'm trying to raise awareness for, uh, for baldness in men. So how do you think this grommet's going to fare in the auction then? Multi-million pound? I think grommet? this will be probably the, the, uh, the one that gets the real bucks because there's a lot of bald men out there. All you need is a Japanese bald man with a lot of money. Nick Park of course designed his own grommet titled Newshound which is plastered with various newspaper clippings from the Wallace and Gromit films. And this is the only statue in this trail to feature Wallace posing as though he'd carried out the deed himself. One thing people love about the films is the news headlines. I thought, why not cover him in newspapers and with all the headlines from the films and lots of puns and stuff. These were eventually placed across the city of Bristol, waiting to be found by members of the public from the 1st of July to the 8th of September 2013. To aid the search, a smartphone app titled Detecto Gromit, similar in concept to something like Pokemon Go, was released at the cost of 69p. These proceeds also went towards the Grand Appeal charity, with the app reaching number one in the entertainment category of the Apple Store. Suffice to say, Gromit was a smash hit with the locals, whilst the hunt also brought plenty of visitors from outside of the city. 
However, on the flip side of all this positivity, vandalism raised its ugly head. And can I just repeat that these were made to raise money for a children's hospital. And despite this, a total of five statues were vandalized. It's hard to understand why it happens, but you know, there's another 70 odd grommets out there that everybody's enjoying. And we're gonna get the, that, those two repaired as soon as possible. This is why we can't have nice things. The most notable damage was to the statue's Pottery in Motion by Joanna Lumley, which had its tail ripped off. Caracello by Guilino Carapia was pulled off its plinth entirely, whilst Grosscar by Chris Taylor lost an ear. Fortunately, these were all restored in time for the end of the trial, when the grommets were collected together to be displayed as an exhibition at the Cribs Causeway Mall, attracting over 25,000 visitors, including Wallace and Gromit's creator, Nick Park. I've been constantly overwhelmed by different stories of people, you know, coming from uh, Japan, China, you know, Sweden, all sorts of places. I think you've seen all the grommets, there are 80. Well, I'm afraid you might have missed this one. He's number 81. He's been specially commissioned for this exhibition and it's the first time he's been on view. As well as the locals loving it, the grommets have attracted visitors from around the country and indeed the world. Hotels in the city have reported record business and other attractions have seen visitor numbers up. Then on the 3rd of October 2013, all 80 statues were auctioned off from their current location, which was a much greater success than anyone anticipated. The pre-auction estimates for all of the statues combined was 1 million. However, this goal was surpassed about halfway through the auction. Each grommet exceeded its estimate of 10 grand each, with the highest selling individual being the Grommet Lightyear model by Pixar, which sold for 65 grand. So in total, the auction raised £2,357,000, which is not bad, is it? <laughs> Thanks to this staggering amount, the Bristol Royal Hospital for Children was able to afford life-saving medical equipment such as an MRI scanner previously deemed unattainable, which was purchased using the funds from Wallace and Gromit's Grand Appeal. Following on from its enormous success, Gromit Unleashed went worldwide with a trip to Hong Kong. 70 new sculptures were created that helped children's arts programs in hospitals across Hong Kong. Back in the UK, a sequel was planned almost immediately after the initial trial had finished. Ardman's chairman, Dave Sproxton, suggested that this should involve Shaun the Sheep, which was developed into 2015's Shaun in the City trial, coinciding with the plot of the Shaun the Sheep movie that released that same year. I actually saw one of these on a trip to London at the time, but had no idea of the context. Now I can see that there were initially 50 Shawns placed in the capital, with a further 70 appearing in Bristol later on, expanding the scope of the trial beyond the original Gromit Unleashed. Funds from the London trial went to Wallace and Gromit's children's charity, whilst the Bristol funds still went to the Grand Appeal. Yes, there are multiple Wallace and Gromit charities, and I'll be sure to link them down below. Overall, this was basically the same process with a new coat of paint. The total of 120 Sean statues were distributed all over the cities. An app was released titled Sheep Spotter to help the public find them before being rounded up for two exhibitions this time, one in Bristol and one in London's Covent Garden, before being auctioned off. The trial lasted from the 24th of March to the 8th of October 2015 and was bigger in every respect than its predecessor, although despite the 120 Shawns being publicised across two cities, one of which being the capital, only £1,087,000 was raised. Yeah, that's still an enormous number, but it's less than half of the first trail's earnings, which makes you think. Was it just Gromit that made the first one so popular? So naturally, in 2017, 12 Gromits greeted the people of Kent, Leeds and Oxford in Gromit Unleashed on tour, which saw the sculptures appear in shopping centres across the country. But this was merely a small promotion for the next trial. Gromit Unleashed 2 was unveiled in 2018, now featuring Wallace and Feathers McGraw statues in addition to the Gromits with 67 sculptures being placed across Bristol once more. 
These seemed to get more creative with each trial and some more big names were collaborated with to give us the likes of Lego Gromit, this Sully Gromit from Pixar's Monsters Inc. I love how he's actually got the fur and Gromit as Alex the Lion from DreamWorks Madagascar and Wallace as Mr. Spock from Star Trek. This trial raised a total of £2 million for the Bristol Royal Hospital for Children and St Michael's Hospital's Special Baby Care Unit. In 2020, Gromit unleashed the Grand Adventure, so Wallace, Gromit, Feathers McGraw and Shaun the Sheep in the same space for the first time with this ambitious exhibition taking them to Russia, Australia and America, in addition to the Cribs Causeway Mall in Bristol. Also offering a 360 degree virtual tour for those unable to attend, which is just as well, as this event was brought to an unexpected halt when that thing happened back in 2020. In July of 2022, the Gromit Only shop opened in, you guessed it, Bristol. This is now a permanent fixture featuring some of the life-size sculptures and smaller collectible figurines of each grommet design that you can buy. It also features Half Moon Bay products such as the grommet mug in all of its forms which are also available via the online shop. Given that Wallace and Gromit haven't actually been on screen for well over a decade at this point, you can only imagine the success of the trials and merchandise sales will increase tenfold once the new film drops in 2024. Now 10 years after the first trial, there's set to be another in 2023 in the form of Shaun by the Sea in Brighton. From what I understand, this one is connected with different charities and the statues are being designed by members of the public who can submit their designs online as opposed to hand-selected celebrities. But to conclude, since 2013, Gromit Unleashed and its follow-ups have raised a few million pounds for a tremendous bunch of charities across the globe, but mostly in Bristol, and highlights just how much Wallace and Gromit continue to resonate with the general public. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this, whilst you can check out the aforementioned charities in the description below. Thanks for watching.